Hello everybody and now we are back with uh, this fourth lecture in this lecture series on digital forensics. And my name is as always, unsurprisingly, Joachim Schäverestad, lecturer at the University of Skövde. And I am happily bringing this uh, extreme amount of knowledge to you. Uh, so, we are back from holiday and we're in this little dark room where all the lectures are being are being recorded. New batteries in the keyboard and then the small mouse, so everything should work smoothly. And the topic of today is, uh, remember that we talked about collecting, analyzing and reporting on digital evidence in the second video lecture. And now we're actually going to dig deeper into all the, those steps beginning with the process of collecting evidence. And, well, to, uh, to start that discussion, I want to talk to you a little bit about what digital evidence is in the context of uh, digital forensics. So, as we all know, digital forensics is about examining dig digital evidence. And digital evidence would be, depending on who you ask, data that is collected from digital storage. Uh, some s digital storage media like a USB drive, a DVD disk, uh, a hard drive, a cell phone, or so, or so on, and that is subject for a forensic examination. One may even say that digital evidence is the actual piece of data that you are that you're extracting from a digital device and that you're using in your report. So, let's say that you're asked to. Uh, to find evidence on whether or not a computer has been involved in a drug scam, then the evidence, the actual final evidence will of course be the data that you use to support your final findings. Maybe you find some emails where the owner of the computer is buying drugs and then you can say, well, this computer seemed, seems to have been involved in a drug scam and here's the evidence to support it. Uh, however, what's very important from a technical viewpoint is that when you're handed a computer, you not tell what parts of that computer that will be evidence because you don't know if the data that you're going to use to uh, to support your findings or to answer the questions that are asked from the investigators, you're not going to know if that data is positioned in the front, the middle or the back of the hard drive. And for that reason, when beginning a forensic examination or whenever handling a forensic examination, you have to tr treat the entire storage device and even the entire computer uh, as evidence. Uh, basically, you can say that everything you seized during a house search should be treated as evidence. Um, however, from a technical viewpoint, you can sort of divide the evidence collection process into two different uh, different phases or two different sets of, uh, of data collection. And the division depends on whether or not the device that you're examining is on or off. Um, this lecture and the next few slides will cover evidence collection on devices that are off or data in rest or turned off storage devices or whatever you wish to call it. And then there is the process of handling evidence or collecting evidence from devices that are running live forensics um, and also the forensic experts role in house searches and that will be covered in the next lecture. So moving on. Um, First, we need to understand that whenever we're handling evidence, especially when we're doing it in law enforcement, it's of extreme importance that the state of the evidence is not changed. If you take it, if you take it from, a, from the standpoint of traditional forensics, let's say that you capture a fingerprint, everyone will understand that the captured fingerprint must stay intact. I mean, if you smudged it, uh, it will impos be impossible for, for it to be used. For one, it will be hard to to identify anyone with a broken fingerprint, but most importantly, it will be totally unadmissible in court. And when we're in the concept of computer forensics, it means it basically means that when we're seizing a data carrier or well, uh, some kind of storage device like a hard drive, it's of utmost importance that the data on the hard drive is exactly the same when we return it. So by the end of it, our examination, the date on the hard drive must not be changed. That's the ground rule. Uh, as we will see soon, it's not always possible, but that's what we're striving for. Um, and what you also have to understand is that almost every time that you use or whenever you use a computer, 
it does leave traces. I mean, just plugging in the hardware to a computer will leave traces. There will be some data written to the new hard drive, and there will be so therefore there will be some modifications to the data on the storage device. We need to understand this because when we understand this, we can take actions to prepare the device for a secure examination, which is an examination where this modifications does not occur. So how how do we do that? Well, the, the way we do that is that we use a device called uh, a write blocker. So when we get a computer that is turned off uh, to our lab, then the first thing that we do is that we extract the hard drive from the computer so that we can examine it uh, in our, with our computer, with our anal analysis tools. But instead of just plugging the computer uh, or the hard drive into our computer, we plug it into a write blocker. Uh, and a write blocker is a device that prohibits your computer from writing uh, data to the storage device that you're going to examine. So instead of just plugging the device you're going to examine into your computer, you plug it into a write blocker and then you pl plug the write blocker into your computer. And now you ensure that nothing can be written to the disk that you're going to examine. And we're not done here because the next thing, uh, there's still some risks because we have the disk here, it's running and it's spinning. And if we're gonna do a forensic examination that might run for several weeks, and that is of course a risk that the disk will break. Maybe it will crash and, or maybe it will be overheated or, or whatnot. So instead of analyzing the disk when it's running, we're gonna take a copy of the disk and we're gonna do that by creating a so-called forensic disk image. Uh, a forensic disk image that is a bit-by-bit -bit copy of the device. So we will just copy the hard drive or the storage media that we're going to examine from the first bit of the hard drive to the last and we will store that as a file on our own computer. And then we'll use that forensic disk image and that's what we're going to analyze. Uh, this gives us the, the adv advantage that we do not risk destroying the hard drive that we're examining. We do not risk writing anything to the hard drive uh, and also it's uh, my personal experience that uh, the performance of our forensic tools are usually much much greater when we are working with a disk image instead of, uh, of the actual disk. So, so this is how we collect digital evidence from, um, from a computer that is turned off, extracted hard drive, put it into a write blocker use the forensic tool to create a forensic disk image. This can be done with a number of tools. Uh, FTK Imager is one that we will use that is free for all. Uh, and the last thing that you need to know is that this is the best case scenario. Uh, unfortunately, it's not always possible to create an image. And then you will need to work on the actual hard drive sitting in your write blocker. Uh, there are also cases where you may be forced to conduct the examination on the actual computer that is subject for examination. Uh, you may not even be able to extract the hard drive. It may be um, a hard drive that is physically let it on to the motherboard or whatnot. And in those cases, you may for some reason have to start the computer and actually go in there and look with some live examination tools that we'll discuss next. And these processes, every other process than doing a forensic disk image, that is a step away from best practices and in most cases a step away from regulations and for that reason it's very important that you understand that when you do these uh, steps from the beaten path if you will it's very important that you take careful notes because when you're up there in court and someone says uh, and you're saying that hey here is uh, nice uh, traces of this computer being used to download child pornography and someone uh, the the person that is the suspect may say well but that's because you did a live examination on my computer and you must have been going into some strange forum where these traces uh, presented themselves uh, and if you haven't taken notes then you're basically out but if you're taking notes and written everything that you've done down carefully then you can say no the only things I did was that I turned on your computer I logged on I used my nice forensic tool to extract all the web traffic I didn't even touch a web browser and then that explanation falls so the beaten path follow it if you can for some reason take careful notes uh, that's all on how to gather evidence from computers that are turned off thank you thank you for your attention if you have any questions, post them in the comments field and I will answer them as best I can. Bye.